A Disney cruise is a magical adventure, but if you've never been before, you may have a lot of questions, and that is what today's video is about, answering your questions about the Disney Cruise Line. Thank you to everyone who sent me a question. The first one comes from Megan. I'm going on my first Disney cruise in January because of your videos. What is one piece of advice you would give to a first-time cruiser? Great question. One of my biggest pieces of advice if you're a first-time cruiser is just to remember that this is unlike a Walt Disney World or Disneyland vacation where you can plan out everything you want to do in advance. And for many, it's kind of, you know, it throws you off at first because you're thinking to yourself, I have to know where I want to go and what I want to do. That's not what this kind of vacation is. You just have to kind of be able to make a plan as you go, see what you like, and then go to it. It's just an adjustment you have to make in your mind. Just be ready for it. What are the benefits for a non-Disney person to try a Disney cruise? Trying to convince a friend of the benefits of choosing Disney over another cruise line. Good question, Mary. I could list off a dozen different reasons why you want to choose Disney, but one of the biggest ones, in my opinion, is Castaway Key, Disney's private island. It is absolute paradise. It's great for those who love Disney, for those who don't really know Disney that well, it's great for everyone. The next question comes from James. Hi, Michael, we want to find statues of Mickey and Minnie under the sea at Castaway Key. How difficult is it to find them? Not too difficult. Snorkeling at Castaway Key is one of my favorite things to do. You go out there, you see the statues underwater, it is super cool. To find them, it's actually relatively easy. Just pick your head up above the water as you're snorkeling along and look for the white or red buoys that are sitting on top of the water. Those buoys indicate where you can find the different things underwater. So they're relatively easy to find, but when you're standing on the beach and you're looking out there and you see those buoys, they may look like they're relatively close, but it is a little bit further than you may expect. So just take your time. Blow up that life vest so you have a lot of air right there and you don't have to really struggle to stay afloat. You can just kind of paddle along at your own pace and then make it to those statues and other items. It is definitely worth it. Scott asked, at about what time would you recommend arriving at the terminal before boarding the ship? Very good question. I recommend 10, maybe 10.30, maybe even 11. 11.30 I think is about as late as I would schedule to get to the terminal. Not because you're going to get on that early, just because I like to be there with plenty of time to spare. That's just me personally. You can get there probably as late as 2 o'clock and still be fine. I just like to schedule it just a little bit early to have as much time on board as possible. Rain Design said, love that you're doing this. Here's mine. When and how do you find out what day of the cruise things like Pirate Night and Halloween Party are happening? We want to plan some other special activities, but we don't want to miss the fun of those events either. It's a good question that I actually asked myself before our Marvel Day at Sea Cruise. I called Disney about this exact question because I was wondering when Pirate Night was. I knew when the Marvel Day at Sea was, it was the only day at sea, but Pirate Night, I wasn't too sure. I called them and they told me when it was, but they also said that it can vary depending on that specific cruise. So let's say something happens, maybe it's a little bit rougher winds, they're going to push Pirate Night to another night. So you can never be sure about what night, maybe Pirate Night, will be happening, but they will schedule it in advance. My best advice to you is to call the Disney Cruise Line phone number, which I will leave in the description of this video, and ask them. They'll know when it is supposed to be, but also they may change things along the cruise. Lawn War asks, this may sound like a strange question, but are there public restrooms on the ships, or do you have to head back to your stateroom all the time? Not a strange one at all. There are public restrooms throughout the ships, different parts of the ship, the aft part, midships, and even forward. You'll find restrooms throughout, and they're especially clean. From Casey, which departure port that you've used is easiest to access from the airport? Very good question. I would say Port Canaveral. You have the Magical Express right there. It can take you right to the ship. To me, that was the most convenient rather than trying to get an Uber, but that's just me. Galveston was fine too. Miami was fine too. My favorite, Port Canaveral. Lisa asked, what is your favorite and least favorite restaurant slash dining you have had on the Disney Cruise? How would it compare to dining at Walt Disney World? A very good question. My favorite dining experience on board the Disney Cruise Line was actually Palo for brunch. I absolutely loved it, but if we're just considering the rotational dining, I loved Tiana's place. Amazing food, loved the entertainment, loved all of it. It was so much fun. How does it compare to Walt Disney World? It's different. It's just different in so many ways. I love Walt Disney World dining too, and you get more variety at Walt Disney World. The Disney Cruise Line has exceptional food as well. DVC Travels asked, would you cruise again 
Dana in the winter months. Yes, I would. Even though Dad and I missed Castaway Key and we're still sad about that, we've got to get back to Castaway Key because of that cruise, we would definitely do it again in the winter. It was a little bit cooler, a little bit windy. That being said, just maybe a few more layers on top and we would have been in great shape. So I would do it again in the winter months, but it's not my priority. I'm going to prioritize the spring, summer, and early fall. From Larissa and Richard, have you ever considered doing the breakfast in the restaurants on the final day rather than cabanas? If not, why not? Very good question. It may surprise you, but this question was on my mind even before you mentioned it. I was thinking about maybe we should go to breakfast at one of these restaurants for that last day. The reason we don't is either we don't wake up early enough, or maybe we just kind of want to relax without, I don't know, it doesn't feel like pressure, but the feeling like you have to be out of there by a certain point. We just like to kind of just take our time, just look outside, just kind of let our minds go blank on that last morning. That's just me. I'm sure in the future we will try one of those restaurants and I'll let you know all about it. But for now, we've been trying cabanas for that last breakfast. Holly asks, in your past Disney Cruise experience, where would you say is the best cabin location? Good question, Holly. For me personally, I enjoyed any deck in the midships. For the aft, I enjoyed the higher decks like five, six, seven. The lower decks in the aft, I definitely wouldn't choose as my first choice simply because of the engine rumble. Forward, I have not tried yet, so that's one I do want to try in the future. I would probably pick, given the choice, let's say they all cost the same, probably midships. That's probably my favorite just because it's convenient to everything. But aft in the higher decks, that's great too. Those, you really can't go wrong. Midships anywhere, higher deck in the aft. The next question comes from Amy. For a first timer, would you recommend cruise only or Walt Disney World plus a cruise? Good question. If you're talking about a cruise of the same length, whether it's with Walt Disney World or without, I would definitely say with Walt Disney World. That being said, if you're talking about a shorter cruise with Walt Disney World or a longer cruise by itself, I might recommend just the longer cruise by itself. The reason I recommend that is you get a greater appreciation for the cruise and you'll know whether or not it's right for you. Because if you go on a shorter cruise, sometimes you don't get a full understanding of what being on a cruise ship is like because you're there and you spend one night and then you're on an island, the next island, and then you're back. It's just a little bit too fast. You don't get a full appreciation of it. Once I was on the seven night or the five night, I really appreciated it so much more. So a longer cruise for that first one. If you want to, obviously, if you want to just test it at first with a three night like I did, I definitely definitely understand that, but if you feel brave, the seven night or maybe even a five night is a great one to start with. Madeline asks a very good question. Why is the Dole Whip different than in the parks? I have no idea. I think Disney should change this right away so the Dole Whip on board the Disney cruise ship is the same as the parks. Right now, and I'm sorry to say this, right now I cannot recommend the Pineapple Dole Whip on the Disney cruise ship. If they change it to match what they have at Walt Disney World or Disneyland, I will recommend it. Otherwise, I, I can't do it. Disney, make this change. From Disney Cruise at Sea, what names do you think they'll give the new ships? Oh, you have the best videos on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to say Imagination, Adventure, and inspiration. It's really tough to try and guess where Disney's going to go with these names, but I have no doubt we're going to love them. The next question comes from Sarah. Have you considered trying early dining? We found the service is better. I have tried early dining on our very first Disney cruise on the Dream. It was really nice. That being said, I actually prefer late dining because usually, not always, but usually there are fewer kids at late dining and it's a little bit more quiet. I really appreciate that. I found the service is great no matter what, but that quiet is something I really appreciate. Chasey asked, how long were the sofa beds and were you comfortable when you slept on it? Very good question. I'm six feet. I would say the sofa bed was about six two maximum. That, that was about it. I did not have much space, but it was just enough. Was I comfortable? Yes, it was not bed comfort, but it was comfortable enough. I wouldn't say I want that to be my permanent bed, but for a cruise, Absolutely, and I would sleep in the sofa bed again. The next question comes from Chloe. Cruises you want to go on next? Itinerary, ship, length, etc. Okay, I'm gonna say the Disney Fantasy. I wanna try Star Wars Day at Sea, or maybe Halloween on the High Seas, and Seven Night. I love the longer cruises, but the Disney Fantasy is definitely on my list. Roman asked, what is your favorite port other than Castaway Key? For me, it's Key West. I love the Key Lime Pie, the southernmost tip of the United States, and just the history all around. Also, 
they have that free bus going all around that you can just take to different destinations. It is a great port of call. Dominic asked, I'm going on a cruise in September. What do you recommend for me to do when I'm at Castaway Key? Very good question. I would say the Extreme Getaway Package. I love that one. It's a great way to kind of test out a lot of things at Castaway Key. You get the snorkeling, Stingray Adventures, the bikes, the float rentals. It is magical. Extreme Getaway Package or another option that is very, very good, the jet skis. I loved, absolutely loved the jet skis, but it depends on what you want to experience at Castaway Key, nice and calm and relaxing, or the adrenaline rush of those jet skis you choose. Mouse Junkie asks, how many days and nights would you recommend for your first cruise? It's a very difficult question because for some, going on that very first cruise is a test. You wanna see how you feel on board, the movement of the ship, will it bother you? Do you like the activities? Do you like being in the sun during the day? These kind of factors are things you do wanna test for yourself. And for many, that test means maybe a three night or a four night, and that is totally fine, absolutely. And I did that for my first cruise, you remember. That being said, I didn't get the full appreciation of being on board board until I tried the seven night with my brother. It was so magical and it was only after that cruise I realized how much I enjoyed being on the Disney Cruise Line. And you see me going back again and again because I enjoy it so much. So my recommendation, if you're just trying it to see if you like it, try as long as you feel comfortable with. So if you feel comfortable only with three night, three nights for you. If you feel comfortable with five night, go with that five night. If you feel comfortable trying the seven night for your very first cruise, I recommend it. Whatever you're comfortable with, just to try that first cruise to see if you'll like it, go with that. From Princess Yessie, do you tip extra at Apollo or is the gratuity added with the extra price that you pay? Very good question. When my dad and I were there, this was before a recent change that Disney made, it was $30 per person, not $40 per person. So this information may be slightly out of date, but when we got our bill and you do get a bill at the end of that Apollo meal, there was no gratuity already added. And I recommend you tip as much as you feel is appropriate. They do a fantastic job. Apollo. After talking about Apollo brunch, this question makes sense. Are you ever going to do Apollo for dinner? Yes, one day in the future. I have not done it yet because I'm still kind of giving those restaurants a try. Several of them I've never been to before, like on the Disney Fantasy. Once I give them all a try several times, I will be trying Apollo for dinner. And in the future, with the platinum level Castaway Club membership, I'm looking forward to Apollo dinner every single Disney cruise included with my platinum level membership. Next up from Kate Queen, if you don't have the photo package, will cast members still take pictures with your phone like at Walt Disney World? Yes, they will. Usually it's the character attendant. You'll hand your phone or camera to them and they will take the picture. Or sometimes I've seen the photographer take the phone or camera as well. So one or the other, someone will be happy to take your photo with the character if you don't have that photo package. Next up from Floris, I, like you, am someone who has a hard time relaxing and not in a go, go, go. Any helpful tips? Very good question. Believe it or not, since before I ever stepped on board the Disney cruise ship, I've been trying to do less of the go, go, go and more relaxing on vacation. I realized this after I was on a Walt Disney World vacation and at the end I felt like I had breezed by the entire thing and I didn't have that many memories because I had moved so fast. And I wanted to capture more memories with these cameras, my eyes right here, and capture those memories in my mind. And I realized that if I slowed down my vacation just a a little bit, I could do just that. So once I stepped on board the Disney cruise ship, it really helped me in this uh, process to try and, you know, slow down just a little bit more. Yes, there are plenty of things to do on board, but it also can help you slow down if it's something you want to do. And that's the key. Do you want to slow down on vacation? If you do, definitely recommend the Disney Cruise Line. If you don't, maybe a shorter Disney cruise to see if it's right for you. For beginner cruises, what time of year do you recommend? I recommend spring, summer, or early fall. All great times to be on board the Disney Cruise Line. I know there are concerns about hurricanes in the Caribbean. Just know that the Disney Cruise Line is all about guest safety. They are not going to go sailing if there's a major hurricane. So you don't have to worry about that. Just go when the weather is super nice. I recommend spring, early fall, great times to be there. TV Longo asked, did you have any concerns about cruising before your first cruise? Yes, I did. My mom and I both had pretty big concerns about the Disney Cruise Line before we ever set sail. Mine was all about what we would see and do on board. I'm so used to Walt Disney World and Disneyland and theme park 
Park Adventures are we going to have enough to do while we're there? I found that, that there is plenty to do and I also loved the relaxation. So for me, it was a win-win. I loved it. My mom's concerns were all about safety and being far away from the land and what about the weather and some concerns about the ship and you know what happens if we break down, who's going to come help us, there's no land around, all of those safety concerns, but she too loves the Disney Cruise Line. She saw how many safety precautions they take, how prepared they are. She did a lot of research in advance on safety as well, so she now absolutely loves it. Cannot wait for her next Disney Cruise. If you were to pick any cruise itinerary, which would you go on? Cost is not a problem. If cost is no issue, I really want to experience one of those cruises to Hawaii. They sound absolutely incredible. I think it's a nine night and a 10 night. They go around the islands, then you go to or from Alaska. That sounds absolutely incredible. In second place, I do want to try the Alaskan cruises. I also want to try the Disney Fantasy. So many new experiences to be had in the future. The next question comes from Ben. For a party of two, will an inside stateroom be too small? I personally do not believe an inside stateroom is too small for two guests. Three or four, maybe it'll be a little bit on the small side, but for two, I thought it was perfect. The next question comes from Charlotte. Which cruise was your favorite? How can I compare them, Charlotte? How can I do this? I've got my family on the dream for the three night, my brother and I on the wonder for the seven night, my dad and I very merry on the wonder, and my sister and I on the magic for Marvel Day at Sea. They were all magical in different ways. I love them all. Instead of picking a favorite, which in my opinion would be totally impossible, I'm gonna tell you my favorite things about each one. For the first one with my family, it was our first cruise ever. Loved being on the dream and with my entire family. On the seven night with my brother, I love the fact that we got to go to Castaway Key twice. Even though it wasn't scheduled, that was so much fun and having that brother time together was awesome. On the very merry time cruise with my dad, I got to spend a lot of time with my dad, which was my favorite part. Also experiencing the holidays on board and being able to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the views with my dad. For the Marvel Day at Sea Adventure, I absolutely loved spending time with my sister and being able to dress up in costume. It was so much fun. Bernie asks, would you be open to a transatlantic Disney cruise? Absolutely. That is one I definitely want to try in the future. Should a cruiser book the itinerary, the ship, or whatever is most convenient or cheap? Very good question. I would say convenience is one of the biggest factors. When can you get off work or school? What time of year is best for you? Also, you want to consider the ports of call. The ships are important, but I don't think the highest priority. They're all extremely nice. Whichever ship you're on, you're going to be very, very happy. So figure out what days are best for you and where you want to go. Olivia asked, I am wary of going on a cruise because of seasickness. Any ways to avoid feeling sick? Very good question. First and foremost, make sure you get some kind of medicine like Dramamine or something else that can help you if you start to feel a little bit queasy while you're on board. Also, I recommend a room in the middle of the ship, midships. That way you won't feel nearly as much of the rocking. For some, having a view of the ocean, like with a veranda, can help with that seasickness. For others, you don't want to have any view of the ocean. So this is a personal decision. Do you want a veranda or inside room? That is up to you. For me personally, I feel like if I started to feel queasy with the back and forth, I would actually want to be able to see outside, get the fresh air, step on the veranda. That would actually be better for me. That being said, I don't really suffer with seasickness. So that is something that you have to decide for yourself. The last question for today, is it better to fly in the night before a cruise rather than on the day of the cruise? I would say yes. If you can fly in the night before, maybe stay in a hotel, it will be much less stressful. You don't have to worry if the plane flight gets delayed and oh my gosh, I'm going to miss the ship now because it got delayed. A lot less things to worry about. The night before definitely enhances the adventure. I recommend it if possible. Thank you so much for sending me your questions. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, give this video a thumbs up so I know to make more of these in the future. If you have any other tips and tricks for cruising, let us know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me. Until next time, have a magical day.